Hi, I'm Betsy, and this is my helper, Ellie. We just bought a 2018 Ram Promaster 1500 cargo van. We plan to convert it to a camper van for fun getaways and adventures. Come along with us on this journey. Big day today. Our wool has arrived from Havelock Wool in Reno, Nevada. We're using wool to insulate the van, and this is actual sheep's wool. And we ordered three and a half inch thick wool, and we got two packs here, which should cover 90 square feet per roll, so a total of 180 square feet. The instructions are that the wool ships in a compressed outer bag, so when it arrives, we're supposed to cut the outer bag, the compression bag, loose so that the wool can expand into the inner larger bag. Working on insulation today. Uh, we're trying to get the insulation up and then get the wall panels put back on. So the way we're approaching this is we've got webbing in spots where we're trying to get full bats of the wool insulation and we've used green twine here so that the green will be more visible against the wool itself. And the wool has two sides to it. There's the scrim side which is very dense and woven and creates almost a fabric. It's very hard to tear it and so on those sections we'll actually cut it with a pair of uh, very high quality Fiskars scissors with comfort grip. And on the other side, it's just loose wool. And so what Havelock recommends on the loose wool is if you need to do confined areas like the rib areas, we'll take some of the loose wool and make kind of snowball sized bunches and stuff them in because that way you can push them into small confined areas without overpacking it. Cutting sheep's wool can be pretty difficult unless you have a really good pair of scissors. So we went to Joanne's Fabric. So that's a Fiskars, I believe. Yeah, cutting that's shears. the one with the comfort grip. Yeah, which is really nice because we had been using a pair we'd gotten from Harbor Freight for 79 cents and you get what you pay for. These were about $30, but you can get coupons from Joanne's for 40% off. That makes a huge difference. We're about to put insulation in the door and we're trying to protect the mechanism so that it doesn't get insulation in it. So we're putting plastic to protect it and we'll put the insulation up underneath and behind it and then we'll tape this down so that the mechanism can continue to move on that spring because the door, it moves when you open and shut the door. As we go through the insulation process, we're finding that you just have to go very slowly. And there are a lot of mechanisms and such within the doors, and we're trying to protect them with plastic and duct tape as best we can. So the great thing about the wool is you really can't do anything wrong. So you put it in, and if it doesn't work, pull it out, and you can pull it apart and fluff it in in pieces. So we removed the six push pins from the headliner. And my technique is that I use a very thin screwdriver just to get some leverage there. And then I put the panel trim tool in behind the screwdriver and pry the push pin loose. Wriggle the styrofoam blocks free. But on this side, we cannot wriggle this piece out without removing this. This piece right here is a little bit of a challenge to get out. It has the buttons. They're not the Christmas tree. They're some other kind. And they're a little tough to get out. But you use the panel trim tool to remove them. And what happens is you're, as you're coming under and trying, you're gonna squish the foam. So you have to put something behind it to sort of give you some purchase and not squish it. 
the one down here is a real bear to get out. You just have to try as best you can and, and you know assume you may muck up the styrofoam a little bit but it, it, it maintained its integrity everything's fine. So we removed the styrofoam piece here and the way to to get this thing out without breaking it is to sort of gently pull this wing up and twist it this way and then you can just sort of wiggle it out. So there are a lot of spots in here where we can do a lot of insulation. Let me show you what it looks like under here. Whee! Okay, so now it comes down and we'll be able to maybe put a bat of wool insulation. There seems to be a piece of sound deadening right there, which is nice. And there's a little bit of foam. A little bit of foam. But uh, we'll put some insulation in these nooks and crannies, but we'll be careful right here because it says airbag here so I don't really want anything going down in here but this will make it cozier I'm putting the push pins back in the in the headliner. Um, these aren't the Christmas tree type. I don't know what they are, but you can sort of see what they look like. So they go back in very easily. You just push them in. That's it. So the trick was with these um, styrofoam pieces is just to be gentle and slow. I got that one back in, but it is a real uh, challenge. So, let's see how this one goes. Few more nooks and crannies and then we'll put that styrofoam piece back up. Just match up the holes where it came from. And push them in, that's it. So this is the Noiko sound deadener that we previously applied and now I'm just putting the Frost King duct insulation over it. Um, and then we'll be building uh, boxes around the wheel wells as well. So that'll be it for the insulation on the wheel wells themselves. We're covering the wheel wells and we're using this Frost King duct insulation, which is just simple um, foam, foam with adhesive and foil backing. And so um, you get this uh, 15 foot roll at Lowe's for about 18 bucks, and that is just enough to cover both wheel wells. So I've already finished the first wheel well, and um, just cut a couple of sections and stick it on. Uh, it's cold today, it's actually very cold today, so it's important to keep heat on the work and on the material, keep everything warm. So just uh, cut the pieces out and stick them on. Um, I'm trying to make sure um, any overlap is, um, the flap is at the top so that if there is any moisture, it will roll down and not behind the insulation or the sound deadener. So over the curved edges, I just cut out a little pleat um, and that allows me to smooth the bottom edge first, coming around the curve and then the top edge over it. And with this, um, with this Frost King, you just want to press it on. You're not really trying to compress it like you did with the sound deadener because uh, it's the foam that gives you the insulation. I purchased some very thick sheet vinyl 
for the flooring. Um, and this vinyl, it's called the brand is Tarquette, and the pattern is called um, Barnwood Weathered. And the reason we picked this one is because it was the thickest vinyl we could find. And um, this in particular was noted for being sound deadening. Um, and we felt that this soft layer would be insulating as well. So that's why we picked this. Fortunately, we had the factory composite wood floor as our template. So we were able to just lay out the sheet of vinyl um, and then put the factory wood composite floor over it. And then use a utility knife and a straight edge just to cut around it. Our flooring layers will be the van rug, which sits down into the ribs of the van with the factory composite wood floor over it, and then our sheet vinyl on top. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you with your project. 